Hi, welcome to Creative Applique's channel. My name is Dawn and thank you so much for joining us today. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. Happy to see you and happy to have you back with us today. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for tuning in. And I would appreciate it if you like this video, if you can subscribe to it so that I know you appreciate and find my content valuable. Also, when you subscribe, if you can hit the bell to be notified when I upload new videos. Today, we are going to sew this little door hanging or wall hanging or tree hanging for countdown to Christmas. So let's get started with what you need. Let's gather our supplies. You're going to need um, some type of vinyl or felt or fabric. This is a glitter mirror canvas and I will put my link down in the comments. I got this from, uh, it's called, I don't know how you say it, it's M-I-K-R-I -I World is where I bought this online. So this is glitter mirror canvas uh, for embroidery. You can also use, this is just a glitter canvas sheet that I purchased from Hobby Lobby. You can find it in the um, felt square section. You can use just basic felt if you wish, or you can use like a marine vinyl as well. Um, you can find a lot of these things just at um, Joanne, okay? And then uh, chalkboard fabric. So this is what we're gonna use for the little circle so um, to write on. Ribbon, you're gonna want ribbon. Um, scotch tape and stabilizer. So for this, I'm going to use the Pellon, um, it says uh, Tearaway. So this is called Stitch and Tear and it's by Pellon. And it is um, medium Tearaway. That's probably gonna be backwards for you, sorry. So it's, by, it's Pellon and the number is 806 and it's medium Tearaway. And I like it because it's got a, it's got a good stability to it, but it, tends to tear really clean and not leave a lot of the threads like some of the designs can. So let's load the uh, design to the machine and get stitching. So the first step we're going to stitch uh, is going to be for placing the ribbons down. So the length of the ribbon is going to depend on what you want to do with it. You can either use um, a length of ribbon for each side. So I don't know uh, if you want to be able to tie a nice bow at the top. Um, you might want to do a foot on each end. I'm going to take it and do a double like this. And I this is 16 inches. And I'm going to take it and just fold it. Um, like that. So you don't need to burn the ends of it. You don't need to use pinking shears on it because this is all going to be covered inside the vinyl. And so we're going to just go and take this down now onto the, um, the stitches that we just did and then we will sew on top of that. So here you can see we have the stitching that we did and I wouldn't normally do it in black but I'm doing it in black right now so you can see. And I'm going to take the ribbon like this and leave it overlapped a bit, I'm putting it right on top of the stitching right there and I'm going to tape it down with the scotch tape. And this scotch tape will hold it um, and I'll stitch right over it and then it'll tear off very easily. And so you want to make sure that the ribbon is going to stay out of the way and leave enough overlap here so that it has, um, when it's stitched down, it'll be able to um, be really secure. Now we're gonna sew the placement stitch for 
the top portion. So for this um, one that I'm stitching here, I'm doing the five by seven. And here's an easy way to determine what size fabric you need for the, um, the sections. Instead of having to print out a template and cut from that template, you can just sew the square and then measure it. So uh, it's measuring at four and a half by three. So what I would, I would cut a piece of um, fabric three and a half by five just to make sure I have some overlap and I'm gonna cut that piece and I'll be right back. And oh, also I wanted to mention that the top portion is the same exact size as the bottom section. So you can cut two pieces at one time. Um, if you're using only one piece of fabric for both sections, you can cut the, the um, only one piece so you won't have to cut it in, in the middle if you don't want to. So you could just cut one piece and if you're using two different colors you can cut them both at the same time. So I cut the piece of fabric and I'm going to tape it down. There are several um, methods you can uh, use for this. You can use the scotch tape like I, I do. You can use masking tape. You can use this um, spray adhesive from Dritz. This is my favorite one. There's also um, 505, um, and there's several different kinds. Um, I like to use the tape because I feel it holds it down really well um, and doesn't leave for bouncing and for fingers under the needle and so forth. So now we're going to sew the tack down. So I hope you can see the stitching on there. Um, and you can see right here, I didn't leave a lot of overlap. So uh, the belt will cover part of that, which will be okay. But I'm, the stitching still got it, but I didn't, I wasn't careful enough when I put it down. So the, you can see where the tape is and it just peels away very easily. And now we'll sew the, um, the placement stitch for the bottom section. And now we'll place the fabric over the stitching. Now if you want to, you can trim this here so it's really close or you could just have the overlap. I don't mind the overlap so I'm just going to put it right on top of it. And this time I'm going to be a little bit more cautious about where I place it. And now we will stitch the tack down for the bottom section. So now with the overlap, I'm just going to leave it and I'm going to cut it at the very end after I have done the stitching because it's going to be a raw edge essentially. It's not, this one is not um, finished in the satin stitch. So it will have the um, raw edge at the edge, at the end, at the end, at the outside of it. So I'm doing that, um, I'm going to leave it so I can cut it all at once at the end and do it really easily with a rotary cutter. By the way, these, this, um, it are, these are the same exact steps as for the satin stitch one. This one I'm sewing right now is the vintage stitch one but the satin stitch one is the same exact steps. It's just finished in the satin stitching. So this time I want to cut the center here because I do want it nice and close to the stitching because the belt is going to go on top of this and I don't want a whole lot of bulk right here. So I'm gonna cut as close to the stitching as I can. Okay, and now we'll sew the placement 
for the belt. And just as before, we will measure. So we need about, it's about almost five, five inches wide. So a piece that's five, five and a half inches by one and a half inches. And then I will tape it down and we'll sew the tack down. So for this one, uh, for the belt, I am going to trim the top portion of it close to the stitching so that it doesn't get in the way of the um, oval for the chalk cloth. I also trimmed the bottom as well so it wouldn't get in the way of the lettering. So now we're going to sew the placement line for the um, oval for the chalk cloth. And again, you can uh, tape it down. It's obviously easier if you tape it down outside of where the stitching will be because then you won't have to try to tape, pull the tape off after. And now we're going to sew the tack down for the circle. Now here you're going to want to trim as close as you can, and I forgot to mention, this is the chalk cloth, which is different than what I used for the belt. The belt is just the um, marine vinyl. Um, but the chalk cloth is different, so you want to be careful you don't pull it up too hard to you know, pull any of the to pull it out of the hoop. Makes it challenging having to go around the camera. These are my favorite scissors. There'll be a link down below in the video of the video that links you to, um, it's called my Amazon store, but it's not my store. I don't sell the products. It's just linking you to some of my favorite products. Um, but as I said, I don't sell them. It's just someone else sells them, but it's just sharing with you my favorite stuff. Okay, so now it's going to sew the decorative stitch around the chalk cloth. And now we'll sew the belt.
Okay, now that all the lettering is stitched out, what we need to do is we need to attach the part to the back underneath of the frame. So we're not gonna unhoop the design, we're just going to remove the hoop from the machine and we're gonna go over to the cutting table and I will show you how I attach it. So I removed the hoop from the machine. I'm not unhooping the design right now and we're gonna take it and we're gonna turn it over. Okay, so this stitching here is the same stitching is, that's going to be for where we need to place the back fabric on there. So you can use whatever you want. You can use the same exact thing you used on the front. I'm just gonna use a basic simple piece of felt since I, um, it's not gonna be seen. Uh, you can use whatever you wish, fabric, uh, sturdier vinyl if you wish. I'm gonna cut this down a little bit and then I'm gonna tape it onto the back and then we're gonna go to the machine to stitch it on. So I cut the piece of um, green down a little bit and I'm putting it on top of and making sure I cover all the stitching. And I'm gonna tape the sides of it so that it stays on. You can do a spray of, um, sorry, the adhesive here, the spray, temporary spray adhesive. You wanna make sure it's temporary spray, spray adhesive, especially for the um, holding it down or you can use a glue stick. I, I think though for something like this and because it's underneath the hoop and it's going to you know, be rubbing against the bottom of the machine, you wanna tape it to make sure that it's gonna actually stay on there because when you flip this over like this, you know, if it's just a glue like that, I'm not sure it's gonna stay very well. You can see even my tape is coming off a little bit. So painter's tape works great as well. Um, and scotch tape or masking tape. Gonna put it back on the machine and we are going to stitch the tack down for the back fabric and then the decorative stitching. So now back here at the machine, when you load this, you wanna make sure that it's still flat like this, okay? So um, make sure you can look under there or feel under there to make sure before you start sewing because once it starts sewing, you're not gonna be able to get that back, all right? And also remember to move, keep your ribbons out of the way as well. Okay, now we are ready to stitch the back of the item on. Now it's time to unhoop the item. Okay, and now you can tear away the stabilizer. Okay, so now one easy way to get this all very straight and um, cleanly cut is to use a 
um, rotary cutter if you have one. You can also use one with a, a decorative blade if you prefer to have, you know, a nice decorative finish on the end of it. Okay, so you want the decorative stitching and it just is going to depend on how much you want on the outside of it left. Um, but obviously you don't want to cut the stitching. So, you know, you can measure, measure twice or three times and cut once, but then you can also cut it again if you wish. And then just make sure you got through all the layers. It's a, it's a really simple, easy, fast way to cut it. Without having to hurt your hand. I think I need a new blade. It's better. Okay, so now you want to be extremely careful right here that you're not going to cut your ribbons. So, fold those over. And if you want, this one may be easier to just do with scissors since you can, um, you don't want to cut through the ribbons, okay? It's really hard to do this away from you. Okay. So there you go. Now all you need is some chalk and you can start writing the days and count, counting down to Christmas. And there you have it. Thanks for joining me today. And if you found this video helpful and you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. That way I know that you've appreciated and find the content that I upload valuable. As always, have a great day and remember, make your life creative.